Good afternoon, boys and girls. Welcome to the episode, uh, sorry, welcome to the 19th episode, episode 19 of Love at First Scent with me, Persilaise, on Facebook Live. I think we should start by smelling a perfume. And I thought we ought to go really, really mainstream and do the kind of thing that often gets uh, a bad press um, amongst perfume critics and the like, a new mainstream masculine and not just a mainstream masculine but a mainstream masculine flanker the kind of thing that so often unfortunately tends to disappoint us this is the new version of bulgari man and as you can see there hang on let me just hold it up properly for you it is called bulgari man wood essence yeah i have got that right um <laughs> which which immediately so sets off all sorts of alarm bells because not only is it a masculine but it's a wood um not only is it wood but it has a, a kind of highfalutin perfumery word in it like essence um and you sort of when you smell these when you walk into a shop or you when you get a sample you you you, you sort of have to hope for the best when you smell these and hope that they're not going to be yet another um masculine cliche but let us remain open-minded i seem to remember then we did the previous episode um of this um i wasn't i didn't have very high hopes for the dolce and gabbana um, perfume that i tried but i'm pretty sure it turned out to be the best one that we tried on that day so there we go i believe this is the standard um bulgari man bottle so i shall have to delay no longer and um i will of course in the usual way say hello to all of you in a moment um give some of you a chance to tune in but I think I kind of want to get this one out of the way. Now, I suspect there is some sort of clever, does this just spray or do I have to do something ingenious to it? I'm guessing that's meant to be a sort of, can you see that? A wood grain pattern on there. Um, and before we spray, let me just bring you all up as well on my tablet so that I can see what questions come up it's not working the summer's been too long turn the volume down okay here we go i've got the comments as well and i will get to all of them as quickly as possible so um do keep the comments coming right bulgari man wood essence the first perfume in the 19th episode of love at first scent he says confidently yeah it's working good start Oh, God. <laughs> okay, stay optimistic, stay optimistic. Um, oh, you're so lucky I do this for you people. Okay, well. My prophetic soul turned out to be pretty spot on on this occasion at least at the start this is every single modern masculine woody cliche you can think of so it's got those um it's it's got those really really harsh super synthetic woods i mean these are the kinds of woods that actually make you think they've ne never been anywhere near a forest which which in itself is is fine. I don't have anything against synthetic materials, as regular viewers and readers will know. But the trick with synthetics is to is to is to convince you that they're not synthetics. I guess um, that. I guess maybe what makes this one a little bit different from from uh, most of these types of masculines, and I'm thinking of, for instance, I don't know, the likes of the new Coach for men, which is that kind of dire soulless thing invictus from pecoraban classic example of this sort of modern style the, the thing that maybe sets this one apart a tiny bit is that the top note has a, a maybe a slightly more tangy feel to it maybe there's more of a kind of green lime element to it and maybe overall it is a little bit gle gre greener greener i don't know whether i'm swayed by the color on the packaging um, the colour of the bottle. I'm guessing that is the colour of the bottle rather than the juice. Very smart bottle, actually. It has to be said. Very weighty. Because it's full of wood essence. 
Um, but this is just, this, this could get me off on a rant about every single thing that is wrong, not just with modern masculine perfumes, but with modern Western masculinity, full stop. It, this, this, so far anyway, this is the smell of cowardice and fear and desperately wanting to fit in at all costs. But at the same time, it's the smell of manspreading because manspreading is an expression of fear. Um, as we all know, don't, don't let any guy ever fool you. It's an expression of insecurity. So I guess, oh, this, what, what an awful note on which to start. But anyway, let us see. Let us see what the press release says. And then we'll give this a few minutes to develop. And we will look at the press release. And I will say hello to all of you nice people. And then maybe we'll have forgotten about this. So um, interesting image, it has to be said, for the cover of a press release. I don't know whether you can see that. Uh, it, it, it's an image that is uh, quite quite overtly trying to mix the, um, the, the urban and, and, and the, the rural, I guess, even though that it's not really a rural landscape because if you look at it closely there, that forest does seem to be growing within an urban landscape. This is quite a lengthy press release. It has a picture of sultry looking man to sell the perfume before and after. Take your pick. Um, it starts with a quote. Well, this is encouraging. It starts with a quote from the actual perfumer who made it, Alberto Maria. So that's encouraging. We are all on the same quest. We want the dynamic vitality of the city but also the life force of nature. Yes, that is all we want. Personally, I would prefer 10 scoops of ice cream, but never mind. We'll go with the dynamic vitality of the city, but also the life force of nature. Capturing the energy of nature for an urban man in tune with his environment, Bulgari introduces its new fragrance creation, Bulgari Man Wood Essence. Bulgari Man Wood Essence blends intense woody notes with bright citrus accents, producing an exhilarating addition to the Bulgari Man collection. Uh, more than ever, urban planners are returning to their roots, to the very ground and nature that sustains their designs. Kind of ironic for something that really smells like it's come straight out of a lab. From healing forest therapy to landscaped modern architecture, they're answering the call of today's busy urbanites, etc, etc, etc. There's a hashtag. The hashtag is citizen of nature. All very good. But tell us something about the perfume. Bulgari Man Essence is a daring tour de force. No, there is nothing whatsoever that is daring about it. Wood is marvellous. Infusing this fragrance with very powerful energy, says master perfumer Alberto Marias. To channel the magnificent energy of the tree, Marias selected strong wood notes, <laughs> cypress, vetiver and cedar wood. Hearing the name Bulgari Man Wood Essence inspired me to combine these intense woody notes from nature. He explains the resulting eau de parfum is as bold and original as its wearer. That I will go along with. It probably is as bold and original as most of its wearers will be. Artfully blend, which is to say not very bold and original. Artfully blended, the eau de parfum is built like a tree. <laughs> okay, let's go with it. Its colourful top notes dance like leaves and branches in the wind. Its earthy middle notes embody the strength of a tree trunk. And its robust... If we get another phallic innuendo here. And its robust bottom notes anchor the scent as well as any roots. All guys like to have a robust bottom. <laughs> Combined, the electrifying fragrance puts the boundless strength of nature at the Bulgari man's fingertips. The better to, never mind. Uh, and something about the actual, <laughs> something more about the scent. Uh, the leaves and branches, otherwise known as top notes, I guess, are the life energy and they are Italian citrus zests and essence of coriander. Okay. The trunk is the inner strength. You need a perfume with good trunk. That's cypress wood and Haitian vetiver essence. The liveliness gives way to robust masculine woods. Uh, the cypress is an evergreen, a tree that flourishes year round like the hard charging city goer. Thank you very much for the biology lesson. Its deep green aroma is intensified by the smouldering scent of vetiver chosen from Haiti to be especially seductive and full-bodied. Hi, I'm from Haiti and I'm especially seductive. And um, the roots are, or the, the base notes I suppose, are meant to be cedar wood 
an ambergris accord and uh, ben cyan benzoin. Like the hearth of a home, the fragrance's foundation is thoroughly warm and inviting. It features another evergreen, the cedar. To intensify its smoky impact, Maria's combined two different techniques for the distillation and purification of its wood. Wood, wood, wood. Citrus at the top, wood, wood, wood. Wood that it were better than it is. Um, and the campaign features Nick Bateman, who is a... <laughs> Who, ha who displays a rugged, rugged yet refined natural beauty, and he is an actor, model, and, wait for it, influencer, of course, who is now based in Los Angeles. Uh, and and he's also a four-time world champion martial artist. Well, thank goodness for that. At least he has actually achieved something. And, and I don't mean that sarcastically. I'm quite happy for, you know, people who have done something in their field to achieve some kind of status rather than people who are famous just, for the, just because they're famous. But he has an Instagram reach of over 6.6 .6 million followers. So, you know, that is probably more important than his sporting um, achievements. And I guess that is it because I'm sure you probably don't want to know any more about the bottle. Hashtag citizen of nature. So let's smell it again. Yeah, the, the 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 kind of green quality and and the and the almost camphoraceous quality of the cypress is coming out really really strongly now, which just it's to me always just smells of stuff like paint stripper and you know if I were to get this on my skin, I think I'd probably turn into some kind of self destructive virus that you know just start gnawing away at my wrists and arms just. To get rid of this as quickly as possible. Sorry, this is this is absolutely the bane of my life. This kind of thing. But uh, but what's the expression? I have taken one for the team. So no, Bulgari man wood essence is not love at first scent, but at least it is consistent with the rest of the Bulgari man range. So on that delightful note, boys and girls, hello, welcome to episode nineteen of Love at First Scent. Let me see if I can now flick through this. So Joe. Uh, hi, Pele per <laughs> try again. Hi, Persiles. Nice to see you live again. Nice to be seen live. I would like to love to be able to say nice to see you live too, but of course that's not how this works. Uh, Niels was laughing. At <laughs> Forget what you were laughing at. And Joe says, which diptyque is that? I don't know if we'll get a chance to get to it, but this is the new um, Eau de Parfum version of their 34 Boulevard Saint-Germain or 34 Boulevard Saint-Germain. Uh, Neil says, first time I actually managed to watch Real Time Perfect. Thank you very much for tuning in. Farhaj, who is that? I don't know who that person is. Farhaj loves my facial expressions. Well, I, I would crack a joke there, but, but I'm not going to now, sir. Your thoughts on Oud Wood by Tom Ford. Why are you asking me about Oud Wood, Farhaj? You know exactly what I think of Oud Wood. Are you, are you, are you looking for a kind of vote of approval? Angeline says bonjour, bonjour to Angeline as well. Eglia says hello from London, hello to you too. Thank you very much for tuning in. And somebody, my mum, says nice suntan. Yes, that's what, you know, Mediterranean Europe will do for you. Thank you very much. The suntan is real actually this time. So, you know, please, please feel free to send your approval my way. So, uh, how many minutes in? I don't even know how long I've been rabbiting on for now. How do I find out how long we've been on for? 13 minutes of me talking nonsense already. Thank you very much. We are now on the very, very last day of August, which means that we just about managed to squeeze one of these in before things move into September. As you know, uh, I, I was on a bit of a summer break where, where I tend to um, and not do these sorts of videos of, or have very much actively to do with the blog, although a few uh, reviews were posted to pop up. For example, today's review is of three new scents from Penhaligons, so do make your way over to persalays.com if you can spare a few minutes to read the review of these three new scents from Penhaligons. Um, and I use the word new advisedly, but you will see what I mean when you go over to the blog. Um, usual things that I say at this stage, thanks very much to everybody for tuning in. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to to, to, to share them, to, to type them in, and I will try to get to as many of them as possible. But if you are watching after the live broadcast, I usually get to most people's comments as well. So just because you're not watching live doesn't mean you can't ask a question. And in the normal way of things, 
this video will eventually make its way to YouTube as well. So if you're watching on YouTube, thanks very much for tuning in. Please consider giving me a like. Please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel if you haven't already done so. And by the way, if you're watching live right now, where are the hearts and the thumbs up, people? You know how much I need them. And do feel free to leave a comment on YouTube as well. Uh, which I think is most of the stuff that I say, uh, other, other, other things that I say as well. Um, <laughs> my mind has gone blank, it's been too long. Yes, please do not forget, yeah, thank you, that's better. Hearts and thumbs up going up now. Uh, do not forget that these are first impressions of these scents as opposed to the written reviews on the blog um, where I take a more considered opinion. So we need to bear in mind that the dry down of a perfume could be markedly different from the opening notes and what I try to do uh, about four or five hours after all of these videos is to post a kind of update in the comments section to say how the blotters have developed um, so that at least we get some sense of, of, of where the scent goes and, and, and what it's like and whether it's very very different at the end from how it was at the beginning. So I think Somebody will remind me if I've, if I've forgotten to say anything. Aglia's left a comment. Bulgur, Bulgari Man Wood Essence. The nose is Alberta Marius. Not too bad. Do you mean he isn't? I mean, he is a fantastic perfumer, but more often than not, he will just be making what he is told to make. Um, but the, the, the scent itself, sorry, I kind of didn't like it. I think that, yes, I remembered something else I was going to say. I had a few uh, people writing in and asking why I don't do more of these on YouTube. For the last few videos, I have tried to alternate with one live on Facebook, one live on YouTube. But I have to say, from the three platforms that I tend to use, because I do do a few, I have done a few on Instagram as well, and they've ended up on YouTube as well. From my point of view, I don't know about your point of view, but the Facebook interface is much, much easier for me to deal with. It's much easier to look at the comments, but not just that. It's, it's also easier to, to then upload uh, the videos permanently like for instance I think it was the last one that I did on YouTube the YouTube system assured me that the video was being saved but then it wasn't I lost it I, I didn't have it on the camera that I was filming from um, and and I had a bit of a nightmare job trying to get it which is why one of the more recent YouTube videos is of slightly lower visual quality because I couldn't get it at the HD quality that I normally have so I, I'm kind of loath to go back to doing them live on YouTube, but I may have to do a few on there. We'll see how it goes. Or maybe YouTube will update their live setup so that it offers the same sorts of um, functionality that the Facebook one does. For instance, a very, very basic thing. I know that um, while you are watching this video, I know that you can see the text correctly, that you're not seeing it as reverse mirror writing because Facebook allows me to flip the image around live so that you can see it correctly. YouTube doesn't let you do that um, unless there is a bit of the YouTube live system that I haven't figured out yet. So all of those things are quite annoying because they do, they do make, um, they do reduce the quality of, of the videos. Um, so I think for the near future, we may be starting with videos live on Facebook and then moving to, to YouTube, but we'll, we'll see how we get on. If you have any tips, for that sort of thing. If, you, if you're if um, you IT whizzes, then by all means, leave a comment here or send me a message afterwards. It's time for another perfume. And I am, I am kind of open to suggestion as well. Before we do another perfume, by the way, you may have noticed that there is a little bit of a, a shrine to Mugler going on here. Um, and that is just to alert you to the fact, in case you're interested, that the, the Aura Mugler scent uh, has now got a body range. So as you can see, they've done um, a body cream, they've done a shower milk, and they've done a body lotion. But also, intriguingly and encouragingly, this is the sort of thing of which I approve, they've done uh, an Aura candle. Now, I'm not the world's biggest fan of Aura, as people will know, because I reviewed it, I reviewed the Eau de Parfum when it came out on the blog, I believe last year, and I did a mini review of the Eau Toilette just a few weeks ago, which is kind of more of the same, but maybe even less safe, maybe even less interesting. But I, I hope that it has fans, and um, that's the you know that's the body range there. But one thing that I do like that Mugler have just done. These are quite cute. Uh, I think they're out already, so some of you may have seen them. They are little. Um, what are they calling them? They are they they're calling them perfuming pens, 
and they've done them for their three feminine scents. So this is the perfuming pen for Alien. And uh, I think they're quite affordable, so they probably make quite neat little gifts. I guess that's the idea. Uh, unless I'm mistaken, in the UK at the moment, they're um, just exclusive to one retailer, but I forget which one it is, so I better not say. Perhaps the press release will tell me in a sec. Um, suitably eye-catching, laser-coloured Mugler packaging. And uh, the idea is that you've, you've got the perfume um, in this fairly, the texture of it is hard to describe. It's all, it's a little, feels a little bit like a crayon and you literally just apply it. Um, and in this case, you get the smell of alien. Um, it has to be said much more subtle than, than, the, than the liquid perfume, than the spray that you would use. Um, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. I think, I think you can sort of see it as a, as a complementary version of the original, but I approve of those. And they come in there, as I say, the three currently available feminines, Angel, Alien, and Aura. Uh, a little bit about them. Always imagining and creating new ways to combine artisanal craftsmanship and innovative technology, Mugler has reinterpreted its most iconic eau de parfum in a never before seen portable format tends to be portable for perfume usually. The perfuming pen, Angel, Alien and Aura are now encapsulated in a brightly coloured solid format, meaning your favourite Mugler fragrance is always at your fingertips so that you can reach out for those robust bottoms. No, I didn't really say that. Mugler is committed to the art of perfumery and today this art has been reinvented through a new object, the perfuming pen, creating a new ritual that will prolong your perf... Hang on, say that again. Creating a new ritual that will prolong your perfumed moment. Intuitive and elegant, the perfuming pen offers a more personalized and intimate fragrance option that is easily slipped into any pocket or purse. Easy to use and practical, this retractable wax stick is ideal for quick perfume touch-ups all day long. So this is your perfume quickie. The perfuming pen scent is applied delicately to the pulse points where lips go in search of a secret kiss. The back of your wrists, behind the ear, along the neck, etc., etc. And yes, as it says here, available now exclusively at the perfume shop. So I don't know whether that means they will stay exclusive to the perfume shop in the UK, but there we are. Um, and actually, let us just take a moment to remind ourselves of how wonderful Alien really is. Still one of the most otherworldly, bizarre, memorable jasmines out there, woody, musky. Jas now there's a wood essence. Um, and so wonderfully named. Do we have any Alien fans out there? Because it really does feel like some kind of beautiful yet terrifying hydroponic beast that sort of descends from another galaxy. Really great stuff. But in this version, maybe a bit soapier or almost it has a kind of bubbly smell to it. Right, let me see what comments I've missed. Angeline says, I love YouTube. But live video on Facebook is better than YouTube live. I'm trying to click on see more and YouTube tends to be choppy on the sound. Does it? I didn't know that. Now, I don't know whether you wrote any more than that, Angeline, but it's telling me that you have, but I can't see more. There's, there's a bit that's saying see more and I'm clicking on see more, but it's not working. Uh, Stephen McElroy says, hello. Hello, Stephen. Um, have you got a new Serge? Yes, I was wondering whether we might have time to go. This is the new Serge Lutensia. Let's move the Bulgari out of the way. It's called Participe Passé. And Neil says, is the bottle in the left corner a Parlement moi de Parfum? Yes, it is. And we may get round to that. If we don't get round to it today, don't worry, because I'm planning to do the next episode very, very soon. Uh, in fact, it, it will be a week today. It will be Friday. But I just need to confirm the time. It's probably going to be a similar sort of time, maybe just a tiny little bit later. It might be 3.30 or 4 o'clock, round about then. Okay, so we did kind of do another one anyway. We'll count, we'll count the alien and the pens as a review. But now I would like to get on to the baby in this little pouch, the neat little amouage pouch. This is how amouage tend to um, send their samples out to me in, in cute little amouage pouches. So, so I won't show the... the the, the, the lab sample bottle, or maybe I will. I mean, it is basically a boring lab sample bottle, but you know what the amouage bottles look like. This one is in the, um, unless I'm mistaken, this is in their feminine version bottle. And this is part of their new Secret Garden collection. 
and it's called Love Tuberose, which is a surprisingly sort of cute, prosaic name, you know, Love Tuberose, but, but, but it kind of works. I like the idea of an Anouage Tuberose, um, and I, I don't know a huge amount about it. I, I haven't got a press release, and I'm hoping it's going to be a great big massive diva of a tuberose beast. Um, where shall I put it? Stay tuned, by the way, to find out what today's um, plastic scent is going to be. Okay. Oh, wow. <laughs> Whew. See, I'm smiling already. Bulgari, you have been relinquished to the past. Well, it's, it's certainly it's certainly a massive tuberose, which is which is always a good thing. So yeah, okay, hang on. While I'm getting sucked into this, it's very 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 com compelling. It absolutely draws you in, but it also has. I wonder if the way it's going to go is that it's it's going to turn out to be quite a sweet tuberose because it's got a very 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 lickable vanilla-like quality to it and, and and vanilla and tuberose make quite good bedfellows so if you think of some of the characteristics that we might normally associate with tuberose like a kind of snarling angry super green quality they are here of course but they are very much more toned down this is this is a tuberose that 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 that, that has had its fill of some wonderful French dessert, like it's just, you know, stuffed itself with the, the, the most amazing um, cream-covered eclairs, although you don't really get cream-covered eclairs in France. Filling eclairs with cream is more of an English thing than a French thing, isn't it? Um, traditionally, anyway. But it's the kind of vanillic creaminess that is emphasising the whiteness of this. So this is, this is... <laughs> This is what the, 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 the witch, the queen in Snow White, would have been wearing if she weren't a witch and actually if everything had gone her way and if she'd been quite happy that she was the fairest in the land and she just decided to surround herself by fluffy white bunny rabbits all the time and didn't try to kill Snow White. Because um, it's, not, it's not innocent, so this isn't the Snow White perfume. There's definitely a witchiness to it, which you can't ever fully get away from with tuberose. And what's interesting as well is that it might mark an attempt on Amouage. I know that the Secret Garden collect Collection is the creative director's attempt, the creative director Christopher Chong. It's his attempt to do the kind of thing that he feels he might not normally be able to do in the main Amouage line, the signature line, uh, or for example in the library collection, you know, the, the opuses, Opus 1 and, and so on, where he can kind of go off on a tangent. So um, things that might be less baroque, less operatic, and this is this has got a kind of smiling, happy quality that you you just would not associate with the Amouage signature line. Which isn't to say that the um, Amouage signature line is depressing or down, because it absolutely isn't. I mean, for instance, take take the latest uh, from the signature line, the Imitation Sense, which are both wonderful, but. But they're serious, so I suppose, I suppose the, the the kind of duality there isn't isn't happy versus depressing or happy versus sad, but it's happy versus serious. Um, they're, they're they're quite grown up the Amouage signature sense, whereas this one maybe has a more youthful quality to it. Nice rosy touch coming through, maybe almost something tangerine like, you know. And and love is a, is a good word to go with it because. Um, it, it does feel quite loving, it feels quite plush and welcoming and, and inviting. And, and most definitely gourmand, but not at all in a sickly way. I'd be fascinated to see what this would be like on skin. Because um, I tend not to use, I, I, I don't like descript descriptives like, for instance, you, you very rarely find me saying the word lovely. It's just not a word that comes to my lips very often. And gorgeous is another word that 
I just think it's so overused that it stops meaning anything. But this is gorgeous because it feels like... I'm going into fairy tale imagery as well, like I did with Snow White. It, it feels like a kind of fairy tale castle made of fluffy white meringues that are vanilla infused and rose infused. So I will be very curious to find out who the perfumer is. Uh, I usually am able to find out from the brand who the perfumers are. But this is this is mouth-watering stuff without being sickly or stupid. I, I don't have uh, very much information about it at all. I'm just very quickly going to try and see what it was that I managed to find out. I don't know if you can hear the siren, they're probably coming for me, so nice knowing you all. Um, all I've got is just some notes, and there you go, tuberose, gardenia and jasmine. Yeah, well, white florals, absolutely. It doesn't have the funkiness of gardenia though, and, but, but, and, and it certainly doesn't have the sort of overtly indolic feel of jasmine. Uh, whipped cream and vanilla, fine, you know, some kind of white whipped cream note, and then woodiness in the base, which will probably come through. So no, this is thumbs up, thumbs up. Thank you very much, Amouage. A very good year for Amouage so far because the imitation scents I thought were a real return to form and I reviewed those, a review of those popped up on the blog maybe two or three weeks ago. So if you, again, if you were to go to persolays.com. Um, right, let me see what comments I have missed. Please don't let me down, dear tablet now. So Anna says, I saw your Instagram story earlier. Thank you very much. And I would like it if you could talk about Daria by San Marco. And this is so annoying because I'm trying to click on thank you and it's just not working. See what's happening is I'm, I can see that you've written more, but when I try to click on see more, it just gives me the emojis to, I wonder what happens if I click on the emoji, no, nothing. Okay, well, I'm guessing you didn't say more than just thank you. So you would like me to look at the new San Marco. Well, perhaps we will do that then. Susan says, uh, love tubero sounds great. It really, really is good actually, um, so far anyway. Right, uh, which one did we think we might do next? Shall we, shall we do the San Marco one then? Um, I don't know a huge amount about this and this is, this is the sample that I very, very kindly got from the brand. But hang on, there are, I can see more comments there than there are here. This is really most irritating. <laughs> Sorry, the joys of technology, live TV people or live streaming. Right, let's just come out of this. And maybe not, is it gonna work? And let me go back to it. No, I can see over there that there are more comments. A few comments didn't come through. I can just about make one out saying, creme patisserie so I'm guessing that's a reference to the eclairs <laughs> and what French eclairs are filled with and somebody and I can't see who it is and I'm really really sorry but feel free to say hello again says watching from Kuwait so Ahlan and thank you very much for tuning in from Kuwait say hello again so that I know who you are how frustrating is this you, you kind of think that with two Apple products on the go you would or is it Facebook's fault let's not blame Apple let's just blame Facebook um, but thank you very much for tuning in and keep those thumbs up and things coming. Um, now, San Marco is a brand that I first became aware of when I went to the PT um, perfumery exhibition in Florence two years ago. I think I went two years ago. I'm sure I didn't go last year and I'm, and I'm not planning to go um, this year. And uh, it's a, I'm going to get this wrong, it's a Swiss based brand. The perfumer is a chap called uh, Giovanni San Marco, and his work is really genuinely very, very interesting. Um, I may not like all of it, but I always look forward to trying um, to trying his work. Uh, I know that one of his perfumes I rated very, very highly last year, but God help me if I can remember what it was, <laughs> I'll have to go back to the blog and find out. But anyway, it doesn't matter because we're looking ahead, we're looking at new things. This one is called Daria, and people of a certain age cannot think of that name without, uh, cannot hear that name without thinking of Beavis and Budhead, but we will just park that to one side now because it's not necessarily a reference that we want to bring up at this moment. Um, but you can all start doing the little Beavis and Budhead laugh to yourselves. Um, many, many happy memories of wasting summer evenings watching Beavis and Butthead on MTV with my brother many years ago. Does anybody even remember Beavis and Butthead anymore? So, um, 
I was allowed to watch it then. Oh, mind you, I, I still think Beavis and Butthead was genius. Okay, so this is Daria. I do have a tiny little press release to go with it, but I haven't read it. Let us find out what the latest is from San Marco. Here we go, people. Will this stand up nicely so that you can display it? Whoa, this is uh, ooh, this is going to be another white floral, I think, but much, much dirtier than what we've just had from Amouage. <laughs> Throw me in that barn and yeah. It's pretty filthy, <laughs> but in a good way. Right, this needs to settle because this is really, really, really powerful stuff so far. Mm. Right, fascinating actually that we're doing this straight after the um, the amouage because it just shows how you can go totally to another end of the spectrum uh, with a white floral. This one, th th this one doesn't have that kind of coconutty snarling quality, which to me always spells tuberose. This is kind of heading more into jasmine gardenia territory, and maybe the funkiness, maybe the kind of slightly mushroomy hint suggests that um, maybe it's trying to be a gardenia. But a really, really kind of stinking barnyard animalic note as well. So if Daria, Daria, Daria is a, a person of the female persuasion, she certainly doesn't mind reaching knee deep into the mud and scrubbing out that barn. Very, very, very pronounced woody quality as well. What's that? Here's the word gorgeous again. Is it a Scissor Sisters song? Filthy gorgeous? Does it sort of go filthy slash gorgeous? This has got that kind of quality. You could imagine... You could imagine somebody quite elegant wearing this and you're completely surprising you because when you go up close you think, wow, okay, this person means business. But if I were just to compare it, where's my amouage blotter? The amouage was white floral, sweet, whipped cream, vanilla, gourmand, mouth-watering, and it's still doing that kind of thing. Sticky, smoother, um, quite sort of sealed up, li like, like a kind of perfect meringue. This is more open, more, more open in the sense of more open to interpretation, but maybe also wider in its scope. It, it, it's not this kind of self-enclosed, encapsulated little fairy world. It's, it's broader. And maybe... maybe, maybe less certain about which side of the, of the, of the gender line it, it wants to lie on. Um, who was it was Arquiste that did a very 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 good gardenia which they tried to sort of say was a gardenia for men uh, they called it boutonnier number nine or <laughs> as I remember somebody once called it boots number nine but <laughs> never mind that that's a joke that you'd only get if you live in a place that has boots the retailer um what did they call it number seven which is why the, there was the boots number seven joke never mind um but this this is a gardenia that could, that I would have thought could work equally well on a man as on a woman, and it's got a kind of almost like an apple-like quality. There's something quite biting about it. So this is this is this is this is somebody that has an edge, very definitely has an attitude. Let's see. Uh, th this is the sort of image that accompanies it. Doesn't really tell you very much. Although it's an image that looks a lot more innocent, I think, than the perfume smells. Not very much on this. The, the name Daria is followed by... Now, I can, I can only imagine that this is Greek. I don't, um, I, don't, I don't read Greek. I don't speak Greek. Perhaps I'll do a little screenshot of this afterwards 
to show you to, to see if anybody can speak or maybe I'll just use Google Translate and 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 find out what it means it's got a I guess some sort of a poem it just says I've read in your eyes the book of your emotions you smiled sweetly at me I kissed you a gardenia tale and just three notes gardenia jasmine and honey and yes okay the honey the honey has got that really, really because honey can sometimes have a really filthy animalic quality and I guess that's what's coming through that slightly sour edge but nice work actually so far uh, Angeline has left a comment saying Dario made me think straight away of Dario Verbovi a model no, well, I'm, I haven't heard of her I'm guessing it's her right um, and if there is meant to be a reference to some specific Daria then I'm afraid it's lost on me so I'm being a complete ignoramus at the moment if if any of you know who this Daria might be or whether you are already aware of who Giovanni Samarco is referencing with this scent I can I can um, email him afterwards and find out and if it is meant to be a specific Daria then perhaps I'll leave a comment but um, It's got a very assertive sensuality, this, which which works well. Very, very good. So, once again, at the 40-minute mark, thanks very much for tuning in to uh, what is already the 19th episode of Love at First Scent with me, Percy Lays, on Facebook Live. Please feel free to ask a question, leave a comment. If you're watching after the live broadcast, by all means, still leave a comment or ask a question. And if you're watching on YouTube, please give me a like and subscribe to my channel and ask a comment, ask a comment, ask a question or leave a comment there as well. And this is the point in the broadcast where I always do a classic choice. And I'm actually thinking, I think I'm going to need to air this room now because I, that is the one perfume that I, you know, I, I choose in advance and I know what it's going to be. But We've gone from, we've got two quite large perfumes because the, uh, the Amouage, the tuberose, was, was quite a, a big scent. And um, Anna says, thank you, thank you very much for watching. And we've just had a very, very large uh, scent from San Marco. And <laughs> the, the classic choice for today is, is equally huge. Uh, let's see what kind of oh did you see me did you see me hiding it there I want it to be a surprise um, I thought I'd do this one because I'm working on uh, an article at the moment uh, to do with retro scents especially large bold uncompromising masculines from the 70s and the 80s and so I've been thinking a lot about are you ready because this is powerful enough to kind of come come at you with its smell all the way through the internet Today's classic choice in a bottle that is looking a little bit aged now is this. So don't all run for cover. <laughs> I, I'm willing to bet that every single person watching this now has smelt this and has got some kind of a view on it. I'm, I'm sure there's nobody out there who is indifferent to this because um, you're either all going to love it or, or hate it. Um, but I don't think you can take any middle ground. It is, of course, the monster that is Kouros from Yves Saint Laurent. Came out in 1981, composed by Pierre Bourdon, one of one of the greatest perfumers of all time. Very, very, very highly respected perfumer. Laura says, I love Kouros. Good. So do I. But I hardly ever wear it. Angeline says, one of my favourites. Good. That's three of us that like Kouros. And my mum says, yes. So I guess that's a good one as well. Um, it's there's just nothing else like it. Actually, let me spray it. And and um, I mean, I mean, I, I didn't. Um, who's who's that? Uh, Gavin says stale bath mat fougere. Fantastic description. Everybody loves a stale bath mat. Uh, and Aglia says my favorite, my man's everyday scent. Ooh, brave guy. And I mean that as a genuine compliment. Uh, Men's toilet, says Anna. I know what you mean, though, because it, it does go into cleaning product territory. And Gemma says, woo, it's a brilliant scent. I, I think the fact that it's a brilliant scent, we, we should all be able to gr agree on, in the sense that there's nothing else like it out there, or certainly there was nothing else like it when it came out. It, it projects like nobody's business. It lasts forever. Really, really distinctive. 
and then there's also the, the, the sort of final criterion of whether we actually like the smell of it or not and that's when we have to completely concede to subjectivity and there are some people who are going to love it and some people who are going to maybe have unpleasant associations with it or whatever it is very much of its time I'm going to spray it now so are you ready for this people um, now I did not wear this when it came out I would have been far too young to wear this but I was aware of it um, it's only really maybe in the last 10 or 15 years or so that I came to appreciate it uh, Liao gives me a thumbs up so thank you very much as well oh. But you see, this is very different. This is very different from the Bulgari face that I pulled because this is just like a <gasps> kill me now because, you know, nothing could ever top this in terms of brilliance. Um, it's just, it's just so 80s, as in early 80s, late 70s, because things did start to change a little bit in the mid 80s and late 80s. It's so huge. I can completely see why somebody um, would say that it reminds them of bug spray because I kind of get that too and I think that's the the massive massive overdose of these strong citrus woody materials it's got a really really bold bitter artemisia note that, that real real back of the throat ripping your throat apart type um, herbal bitterness What's, we've had another comment. Laura says, complex, timeless, and utterly unapologetic in its boldness. And I couldn't have said it better myself. And I think it is that unapologetic quality. You know, when I compare it to the Bulgari that we started with, was this it? Which, which is just so, you know, we've smelt this a million times before. It, it's losing all sense of personality. It's starting to become thin. It's starting to become grating. It does not have the courage of its convictions. Whereas Koros <laughs> is just, it just strikes fear in the heart of every single thing around it. If you haven't tried it, is there somebody watching actually who hasn't tried this? If you haven't tried this, you can find this stuff anywhere. It is, it is quite um, affordable. Whoa, hang on, let's pause because Mr. San Marco himself has just left a comment and I'm not going to be able to read all of it. This is the most frustrating thing. Giovanni, thank you very much for reading a comment, but for some reason, uh, I can't see the entirety of the comments, and I have no idea why. Uh, he's saying, Dear Darish, thank you for the review of Daria. The word in ancient Greek is melichomede, and I'm su I suppose you've given me a translation there, and most annoyingly, I cannot see the rest of it, even though I'm clicking on see more and I don't want to click on report comment because that will get you banned from Facebook. Laura says, Bulgari going balls up. Yeah, if it had any, let's just say that. Um, but I, I didn't bring that up, by the way. I did not bring, you did, it's your fault. Um, no, I'm just clicking on see more. So Giovanni, it, I'm, I think probably all of us will be able to see your comment um, after the video is finished. So I'm guessing you've left a little explanation there of what the word means and maybe who Daria is. So I will I will check it out after the video and by all means all of you please check it out as well. And if you have questions about his range, ask him now because he's watching. Uh, oh, there you go, he's, he's doing it now. The translation of Melichomeide is sweet smiling or better with the smile as sweet as the honey. Nice one, I like it. But the perfume's not actually that kind of innocently sweet, is it? It's the kind of sweetness that kind of that 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 lulls you into a full sense of security and then kind of gets you by the throat. But thank you very much. It's very, very kind of you to watch and to take the time to explain. Back to Kuros. It's quite hard to pull this scent apart because it is it is it is a wall of of perfume. Um and in that sense, technically it's it's just genius. But what have you got? You've got that bitter artemisia note. You've got these huge woods and you've also got these huge citruses. Great big stonking uh, leather, like a kind of animalic castorium leather and an animalic civet note as well. I mean, this has been around the barnyard a good few times. And then also something quite indolic, which makes you think maybe the thing that is throwing it all into sharp relief is, is potentially some kind of jasmine note, but Either way, the, 
the, it, it almost has become a victim of its own success because it is so recognizable and so easy to date you you kind of can't wear this now without making some kind of retro statement or retro comment i don't know if you excuse me i don't know if you're aware of the two new private blends that have just been released from tom ford two fougeres one is called Fougère d'Argent. I've got lab samples here. I don't know if you can see them, but I don't think we'll get around to them today, maybe next week. Fougère d'Argent and Fougère Platine. And, and they both try to do this kind of late 70s, early 80s thing. I mean, one of them is just an almost comically retro um, Fougère. And they both do kind of work, except when it comes to the dry down. Um, because I think less and less attention is being spent to dry downs these days, they don't quite sustain their effect in the way that something like Kouros does. Um, but yeah, classic classic choice for today. The, the peck-pumping god that is Pierre Bourdon's Kouros. Um, and YSL, YSL did some fantastic sense for men, didn't they? You know, when you think of, when you think of jazz, which I was never personally fond of, but is a great scent, M7, the YSL, did they call it pour homme or pour monsieur? I think it was pour homme, the very, very, very lemony one, which just works fantastically as a lemon scent. And um, I'm sure there's one, I'm sure there's a really, really good one. Oh yeah, Rive Gauche, Rive Gauche pour homme, which even when it came out had a kind of retro quality because it was because of that very, very strong patchouli note. Um, I'm sure there's another one, but I can't think what it is now. Um, good stuff, good stuff they used to release kind of difficult to say that now about YSL in their in their L'Oreal iteration but they do still do very well and Gavin says body yeah body cura and but I still have a bottle of body cura somewhere quite different from this um, but but very very good and I think we should just do one more yes indeed 51 minute mark do you know what I think we're just going to keep the white floral thing going shall we shall we do the new version of gucci bloom there we go and i'm assuming it's a white floral because the when gucci bloom came out it was a uh, it was uh, a tuberose a pretty good tuberose for a mainstream tuberose and this one is called i don't know if you can just about make that out nettare di fiori which pardon my italian i think just means nectar of flowers so whether this is going to be a different twist on the tuberose. Let's just do a little bit of rearranging here. By the way, I will probably largely keep this same configuration of fragrances for uh, next Friday. So if there are any particularly here that you'd like me to focus on, like maybe this one, because this, this one is definitely worth mentioning, um, then let me know. Uh, L'Odiver Body Milk from Frederick Mal. Maybe we'll get to that next week. But let's finish with, let's finish with, um, the new version of Bloom. Flower, ne it is it is nectar of flowers, isn't it? Flower nectar. Okay, so I'm gonna be all completely tuberosed out by the end of this, but never mind. I'll come out smelling like the unmentionables unmentionables. I quite like this opaque bottle that they did. What did people think of this, the Bloom bottle? I, th I, th I think this gets our seal of approval, doesn't it? But don't tell anyone. I kind of think it has a kind of sort of Prada quality to it. But don't don't tell the people at Gucci that I said that. Okay. Um. Mm. Very nicely. Very nicely done as far as openings go. N nothing, nothing overly harsh or screechy or unpleasant about it at all. And yeah, okay, it is a tuberose, it is still a white floral, but maybe... Maybe it's got a more austere aspect to it. Okay, so maybe when they're saying nectar, they mean that it's stickier, stickier, darker, more nocturnal, maybe. Um, because the, the first bloom was sort of quite diffusive and, and and bloom bloom was a good name for it because it did have a sort of blooming quality to it you know you 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 kind of imagine the scent 
almost billowing under the under the force of these white florals that were unfurling behind it and powering it. Um, this doesn't, at least on paper, quite have that billowing quality, and it's got almost like a sort of hay-like tobacco note to it. Something, something that's trying to stop things from being too sweet, which is which is always commendable because you know. Sweetness is quite abundant in perfumery today. And maybe there's something about about the kind of citrusy note at the top. Something tangerine-like, quite quite gentle. But yeah, if I were to compare where's where's our amouage? Yeah, the amouage is seems to be getting sweeter by the minute. This one so far isn't doing that. But what it is maintaining, which is where, for instance, you've got, because you kind of got an interesting, well, I, I, I didn't plan to do this, but you've got an interesting range here because you've got the San Marco white floral, which is as, as niche and independent as brands can get these days. Then you've got at the complete other end of the spectrum, the Gucci white floral, which is as mainstream and as accessible and as readily available as a brand can be or as a scent can be and then you've got the amouage which I oh there it is because I hit the bottle didn't I then you've got the amouage which which is in somewhere somewhere in the middle of the spectrum because it it's 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 a it's it's a brand that has got clout it's got some money behind it it uses uh, established perfumers from the big boys but it's not you know you, you couldn't walk into your nearest Debenhams for those of you who live in the UK, you can walk into, or, or the Middle East actually, you can walk into your nearest Ebenhams and buy a brand new Amouage. And they both, both, all can't even count now, sorry. They, all three of them, I think, reflect their particular market's approach to, to a similar subject. So the San Marco one is the one that is the most out there, the one that doesn't hold back with the animalic note, the one that really, really wants you to notice it because that is the only way a lot of niche perfumes can survive by being really loud, really bold, really attention grabbing so that you don't forget them because insipid pleasantness is is death for niche perfumes because one of the worst things that I think you can say about a niche perfume is like smell it and go yeah it's fine because then you will never remember it and you will just go to Debenhams and buy the latest I don't know the latest Valentino or whatever it is so that reflects its particular market approach. The Amouage is somewhere in the middle. Um, it can be a bit more original in its approach. It can still be quite loud, um, but it can't be that strange or weird, even though, you know, to contradict myself, Christopher Chong doesn't mind playing it weird. And then you have the Gucci, which is probably as daring as a modern mainstream feminine can be so which is yeah because compared to most of the stuff that you would smell if you walked into your local department store the gucci is probably actually quite loud and bold because it's not a dim-witted sickly sweet stupid floral fruity floral so i guess in that sense it it deserved top marks Speaking of playing it safe, for instance, how many of out there? How many of you out there have smelt the new Dior? Um, Alana's laughing, so <laughs> good. I'm glad I made you laugh. I can't. I can't work out which bit made you laugh. If if you've smelt the new um, Joy from Dior, which I think I'm going to handle as a as a written review on the blog, that to me is is an example of a of of a brand playing it safe because they feel they absolutely have to. At least here with the Gucci, we're seeing some kind of push in the mainstream, and and they're doing it a little bit with their masculines as well. Um, let me let me see what I what I've got on the um, on the Gucci. I seem to remember that I haven't got a huge amount at all. Uh, a sensual, darker interpretation of the original. Yeah, fair enough. With additional notes of rose, ginger, osmanthus, and patchouli. Uh, osmanthus usually means jammy quality. Possibly. I, I'm not particularly getting that. Um, 
And apparently this is made by Alberto Morias as well. So we've got two Alber uh, Alberto Moriases today. Um, and it's meant to be more enigmatic and woodier. Which I, I will give it that. I think I think it does what it, what it says. And you could certainly do... If, you, if, if your only selection of perfumes is mainstream stuff in a fairly ordinary bog standard department store, you could do a lot worse than this. You absolutely could do a lot worse than this. So um, maybe not love at first sight, but a kind of tick and a thumbs up and a good effort at first, first scent, I should say. So as we approach the end of the hour, or have we at, we, as we approach the hour, I should say uh, thank you very, very, very much indeed to all of you for tuning into this 19th episode of Love at First Scent on Facebook Live with me, Persilays. I really genuinely do appreciate all the comments, all the little emojis, the reactions. It's great to know that you are all out there listening. Please, please, please do leave a comment um, after the video as well because I will, I will, I will review them all. Um, don't forget that I will do a blotter status update probably later uh, later this evening to tell you how the blotters have gone if you're watching on youtube please subscribe to my channel and feel free to leave a comment there as well and as i say the next episode of love at first send will be a week today so it'll be the friday which i believe is the 7th of september yes it must be the 7th of september um and i just haven't worked out the time but but i'm pretty sure it's going to be round about somewhere between three o'clock and four o'clock UK time. So let us just do a very, very final sweep through the blotters. We started with the uh, Bulgari Man Wood Essence. Can I find it? Yeah, there we go. Oh, jeez. It's just, it's just like a... This has got any, any brain cells that this may have had at some stage in its development have just been market researched out of existence. So no, very firm thumbs down for the Bulgari. Um, then I very, very quickly mentioned the the um, Mugler perfume pens. The Amouage. The Amouage is kind of <laughs> going into that kind of 1980s pencil eraser quality as well. Which is a good thing. I always think of uh, Divine Enfant from Etat Libre d'Orange as being the epitome of that kind of fuzzy, sweet, gummy, rubbery smell. And Tuberose has a kind of rubbery quality to it as well. So no, I, I like that one. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to want to smell that on somebody else. Uh, then we had the San Marco Daria, oh, which when you, when you first come back to it, <laughs> again, it's like, no, no, please keep me clean. <laughs> maintain my innocence but then there's another bit of you that goes no just get down in the filth and enjoy it it's um you squeal with protest but 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 in vain because you want to sink deep down in the mire so giovanni if you're still watching if you try to make this innocent if this is your idea of an innocent smile i'm really really genuinely scared to think of what you might create if we asked you to make something really filthy but it's the honey, it's the honey that brings out this evil lurking quality. I'll be very interested to try this um, on skin. And what else did we have? No, Koros, I don't need to re-smell. Classic choice, whoa. Classic choice for today was Koros. And then we just finished with the Gucci, which yeah, is, is fine for what it is. As a contrast to all of these other ones that I'm smelling now, there's almost a kind of red berry note emerging from it. But okay. Thank you very much. Let me just make sure I haven't missed any comments because I think lots of people were saying goodbye. Stephen says thanks. Enjoyed this afternoon. Thank you very much indeed. Gavin says thank you. Very enjoyable. Eglia and Laura still laughing. Well, do you know what? I think we all just need to keep laughing and smiling. Have a very good weekend, people. And I shall see you. Whoa, one final question. When will you review the Lutens? I don't know. Perhaps we'll try to do it next week. But in a sentence, it's a return to the old style Serge Lutens. So if you can, check it out. Because if you like old style Lutens, you might like this. Thank you very much, folks. Look after yourselves. Bye.